Hello everyone, uh, in this video we are going to be looking at uh, an update to the No Man's Sky base building tool for Blender. Um, I've just updated this tool to support the new uh, No Man's Sky update, uh, Beyond, um, and we'll be looking at some of the new features in the Blender tool to accommodate the features in the update. <coughs> um, so the first thing that we'll go over is uh, I've updated the tool to work with Blender 2.8. Uh, previously it was 2.79, uh, but Blender 2.8 is now the most stable version of Blender, so now it works for this. Um, because the UI is slightly different, I'll just be running over um, how to actually get the, the plugin up and running <coughs> by installing it. So once you have the zip file downloaded from, from the Nexus or GitHub or wherever, uh, where we want to go is the Edit button, Preferences, and then you want to click this install button up here and then we can locate the zip file that you downloaded and press install add-on from file um, I've already done this so if we just get out of this and we can find the add-on in the list so here it's under game engine no Man's sky base builder you can type in a filter here to narrow down your search uh, and then we want to click this checkbox here um, if this is your first time using the tool then you won't actually notice anything happening and that's because we need to find it within the user interface. So if we can press X here. Um, now previously it was on the left side in Blender 2.7 but uh, in 2.8 there are some new limitations to, to the UI so now it's on the right side and it's under this little arrow tab here. If we just grab that and move it over uh, this is just a sort of utility panel uh, but you'll notice that there's now a No Man's Sky tab here. If we click on this um, and we have all of the tools ready um, that we can use. Uh, I tend to kind of collapse some of these um, tabs because I don't use them as often, but um, we'll be going over that. Well, you can look over previous videos to, to see what they all do. Uh, at this point, um, what we can do is save a workspace, and that just uh, saves us from having to go through these steps every time. Uh, so what we can do is press this plus button here, and press uh, duplicate current. This basically duplicates your current layout into a new one. Uh, Reselect the, the No Man's Sky tab. And then if you just double click here, we can type it uh, No Man's Sky. Uh, and this way, um, we can actually just switch to different tabs. We can t uh, switch to our previous one. Um, and then we can go back to No Man's Sky uh, so we can rely on one workspace for using Blender for No Man's Sky. <clears throat> so let's jump into some of the new features um, that we can use with Blender that support um, the Beyond update. Um, the first thing that we can look at is I've unlocked uh, scaling of base parts. Uh, one of the patch notes uh, for Beyond was to be able to tweak uh, some items scaling. So you can scale things down, or you can scale things up uh, within a certain range within the game. Uh, but what Blender allows you to do is scale uh, items however big you want it or however small you want it. Uh, and we can do that just by using the scale tools that Blender provides. Uh, so a good example that I like to, to use is to generate, um, well, is to build the generator. This is a, a really good item that looks very good um, when it's scaled up. Uh, so on the left side, you've got these translate, rotate and scale channels. We just grab the scale one here, uh, and what you want to do is click on this uh, outer circle. That will basically scale the X, Y, and the Z channels so that everything scales uniformly. If you grab that and just move it up, we can do that however big you want. And then when you have this in the game, um, it will be the size that you specified. Uh, so here, here are a few examples. So this is the um, a screenshot I took a little while ago of me testing this. And here's another clip of um, the uh, signal booster and just flying around it in a in a, a cool way. So now let's take a look at one of the more um, interesting features of base building in the Beyond update, which is the electricity and power management. Um, so in the tool, a new area of the UI is this power and logic tab here. Uh, and what I've done is given you some buttons that give you a little bit of control as to how we can connect wires up to our base parts. Um, so here I've just set up a very simple uh, test case for us to, to work with. Um, there's a bio generator down here that's going to give us the power. 
Uh, we have four cube rooms set up on the left. We've got a creature farm uh, milking station here and uh, one of the circular main rooms on the right here. Uh, now compared to before, I've, I've tweaked some of the models here to uh, give us these little boxes, this little, uh, little nub here. And these are basically control points. Uh, so as long as you see like a base part that has these boxes, then that, <coughs> that indicates that we can connect them up using wires. Um, so let's just go through setting this up using the tools I've given us uh, so you can see what we can do. So let's first connect the, the bio generator to one of the cube rooms. Um, what we need to do is select both of these things and press connect. And what that's going to do is it's going to sort of analyze what control points, what connection points are available and find the closest ones to each other and then draw the line between them using a wire. So if we click that now, uh, that's basically done that for us here. Um, now if we select this wire, we can't actually move it around because it's actually controlled by a little rig that I've set up. Uh, so the way that we do it is we can select these uh, lightning bolts on the end. And if we really wanted to, uh, we can basically grab that and move it around and the wire will follow. Uh, in this case, we don't really want to do that. We want that to stay on the bio generator. Because bearing in mind that if we move this away and then we bring this into the game, uh, that's not going to be connected anymore. So let's keep it on there. And then if we, uh, let's say we want to kind of make this a little bit neater because this is just like a straight line from A to B. Uh, what we might want to do is follow a little path that goes around and then connects back up again. Uh, so what we can do for that is press uh, the divide button. This will basically create a, an additional control in the middle of the wire and split the wire into two. So we can move that around. Uh, and then we can kind of create more complex and intricate wire paths using this method. Uh, so if we select this end segment here, we can do it again. It creates us another control. We can move this around and create something a bit more neater. Okay, that's fine. Um, now let's go ahead and connect uh, this main room up to the bio generator as well. So if we select one and the other, uh, what I think it's going to do is going to find the closest one. So I think it's going to go from here to here. Let's do connect. Um, but that might not be what we want. Let's say I want it to go over to this side instead. So we can actually use the snapping tools uh, for this. Um, this has been kind of explained in previous videos, so you can you can always look at that for a reference. But let's say we uh, want to move this over to this other control point. We select the, the model, select the lightning bolt, and then if we just cycle around the snap points, so we can actually just move it over to the next one by um, changing the target to, uh, well, pressing next on the, the target cycle of the snapping position. Uh, as you can see, if I kind of keep going around, it's going to go around to the ones at the back as well. Um, but for in this example, let's just bring it down to here. And again, here we can um, basically use the divide button to create a more um, cleaner pathway to the building. So let's just kind of bring that down. Uh, let's create another one here just to kind of bring it Just for an, an example, I'm sure you can do something a bit more interesting than this. Right, um, so now let's connect up the um, the farming unit. Um, let's do it in a kind of an interesting way because uh, I want to show off the split one, the split button as well. So if we select the uh, this cube here and select uh, the main room, uh, I think it's going to connect those two up because it does the closest point. Yep, that's correct. Um, but let's say we want to, um, well, there's two ways that we can do this. So if we divide, um, that's kind of semi-useful, like we could bring it over, but we don't know exactly how that connection point is going to be made. Um, but what we can do is, if we can also do the connect method, the connect button on these uh, lightning bolts. So what we can do is create like a sort of T-junction wire. So if we select this guy and this guy and press connect, then we can use this one control that does that controls the whole wire setup here. Um, now the other thing that we can do 
instead of divide, we can do split. And split does a similar thing, um, but it creates a gap and creates two controls for us. Um, and this is going to be useful for um, if we want to hook up additional like uh, switch boxes or proximity sensors. Uh, that, that sort of stuff I'll be looking at in a, in a separate video. Um, but yeah, uh, the other thing we can do is do this, and then the same way as before, we can press connect on these lightning bolts. Um, I mean, I don't know why you'd want to connect it twice, but that's just something you can do. Um, similarly, uh, it doesn't have to be object to object or object to control point. You can actually select two control points and press connect, and it will do it that way. Uh, but now we've kind of made some some weird messy setup. Um, yeah, so um, this is how it looks ported back into the game. Uh, obviously it looks a little bit uh, stupid, but that's just for demonstration purposes. So yeah, that, that about sums up what's new uh, in the Blender tool to accommodate the, the updates for Beyond. Uh, I'll probably be doing another video uh, sometime soon uh, for just going over some workflows um, related to the, the logic gates um, and how the sort of power management uh, can work with that. Uh, I think there'll be some interesting workflows and some, some tricks we can do there. Uh, so thanks for watching the video. Uh, thanks for your interest in in using Blender to build bases. Um, since since I released it last year, there's been a few people in the community that have picked it up and have, um, have done some, some very impressive things with it. Uh, so hopefully we can see more of that. Thanks.